Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and today I'm going to do your October the 15th, just for today, in a meditation. I hope you're doing well this morning. Let's go ahead and get into the meditation. Let's see what we have. Choices. The title of today's meditation is Choices. We did not choose to become addicts. That comes from the basic text, page three. When we were growing up, all of us had dreams. Every child has heard a relative or neighbor ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? Even if some of us didn't have elaborate dreams of success, most of us dreamed of work, families, and a future of dignity and respect. But no one asked, do you want to be a drug addict when you grow up? We didn't choose to become addicts and we cannot choose to stop being addicts. We have the disease of addiction. We are not responsible for having it, but we are responsible for our recovery. Having learned that we are sick people and that there is a way of recovery, we can move away from blaming circumstances, ourselves, and into living the solution. We didn't choose addiction, but we can choose recovery. Just for today, I choose recovery. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. What a marvelous meditation choices. And I think that is somewhat freeing, even after decades of being clean and in the program and doing service work and steps and trying to, uh, not trying, but actually Try, but yeah, trying to be my best self, right? There's still times when it crosses my mind, man, why am I an addict? Or am I an addict because I see behaviors that would indicate that I have the disease of addiction and I'm willing to surrender to it rather than ignore it? See, so when I, I, I ask myself that question, why am I an addict? I look around at others, right? And I wonder, why don't they know that they are addicts? What's so hard for them to say that they are an addict when the unmanageability is as obvious as my unmanageability was, at least to the onlooker? And so for me, Being able to admit that I'm an addict, right, is um, the characteristic of humility, honesty, open-mindedness, <laughs> willingness to surrender to it so that I can move past it. It's like having an infection in your body and you refuse to go to the doctor to get an antibiotic, get the antidote, right? You won't go get help. You won't let it be diagnosed. And so it slowly kills you. It starts to inhibit what you're able to do because the infection is not getting better. It continues to grow, right? It continues to get worse. And this is the same thing that has taken place with the disease of addiction. If a person is not willing to admit that they are an addict and have the disease of addiction. See, it doesn't take a doctor to diagnose it. Yeah, it's in the DSM, you know, a five TR now. Yeah, it's in there. It's in five as well, right? As a psychiatric mental, but we already knew that, right? They're not telling us anything that we didn't know. They're just making a way so that they can be better paid when they diagnose it and they help an individual receive medication to stop you know, using, right? But they're not telling us anything. 
there are so many doctors involved with the Mother Fellowship AA. There are so many doctors involved in analyzing the disease, right, of addiction. And so this isn't new information for us. However, being able to admit it individually is a big deal. And I have a choice today. I choose rather than be disturbed by other people that clearly seem to be addicts, but don't want to admit it or don't have a desire to stop using, right? Rather than analyzing and comparing them to myself, I personally choose. I choose as a choice to admit that I have this disease of addiction so that it, like an infection, doesn't continue to grow and make me unhealthier. There's so many ways my life can end as a result of the disease of addiction, right? Being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Overdose. Retaliation because of some foul behavior I've displayed or someone I've caused harm to that is revengeful, right? Not to mention what it does to the body. I know one lady, she had so many abscesses on her body as a result of trying to shoot up everywhere she possibly could. She said it was an embarrassment to go to meetings initially because the bandages would bleed through and stick to her body and no one wanted to sit next to her. Can you imagine any of those becoming infected and into her blood system, right? Can you imagine all of the ways that the disease of addiction can possibly kill a person? It's so much like any infection, any in illness that I could get that I refuse to address. You know, and today, you know, being clean, we would think, oh, that's ridiculous. Let me have a fever of 102 and see if I don't find out what's going on. I, clearly, I'm not well. Yeah, we say it, but we don't often do it. We talk about it, but a lot of times we're not about it. You know, we're in the program and still we find ourselves having symptoms of the disease of addiction and unwilling to get to the root cause of it. Oh, you could do that service stuff. You could you could take some uh, non-alcohol cost serve. You could take some ibuprofen, aspirin. You could take some stuff to deal with the surface part of the illness. But it's just going to soothe the symptoms. It's not going to stop you from having an infection in your body. So I can go to some meetings. Yeah, I can go to a few meetings. I might even do some service work. I might even sponsor someone, right? Dig. So there's ways that I can do some of the surface stuff that tones down the impact of the disease of addiction, the symptoms, right? I, I can do that surface stuff, but let's go deeper. Let's go really go to the doctor and allow ourselves to give a blood sample or an x-ray or anything that they indicate that they need to figure out what is at the core, what is really wrong. Let's do that. And that, my friends, is a different topic. That is a different discussion about choices, choosing to recover right? That is a different discussion because that means now that you have a sponsor and not only do you have a sponsor, but you have a sponsor with a working knowledge of the 12 steps, the principles and concepts, and you are involved with that sponsor in the working of those steps. And you are taking suggestions that your sponsor is giving you to improve in a certain area where there is spiritual dilemma. And now you have a spiritual principle to put on top of that, right? and counteract that. Now you have the antidote to your disease thinking, which is honesty. Now we're talking about something completely different. Now we're going into the fourth step after having turned your will and your life over to the care of God as you understand them. You're going into the fourth step and trying to figure out what that inventory, what are the things in my life, the good things and the bad things. And then you're discussing the exact nature of your wrongs with someone. You're going far deeper, but you're not done. You're not done because now the doctor is being able to see you, you, you need a surgery. We need to remove some things. 
but you can't do it. You're going to have to go under anesthesia to have it removed. So now your power is being taken away from you. The only thing that you have some power about is making the decision that you want the surgery and you trust the surgeon and the anesthesiologist to do the work so that you can have this removed. So in the sixth step, you became entirely ready to have these char character defects removed from you. And then you humbly ask the doctor. Yeah, I'd like to sign up for that surgery, doc. God, have that removed from me. Humbly ask the God of your understanding to remove your shortcomings. Step seven. Huh. Man, I was so sick. I came through that surgery. I'm so glad I don't have that issue anymore. I don't have that in me anymore. But man, I probably hurt a lot of people with my funky attitude. I probably owe a lot of people some amends because I just was not operating out. Of, I wasn't well. I wasn't operating out of the right thing. And I've injured them in their lives have gone on with my injury. I've impacted people with my defects. And so you're saying, okay, let me make a list of those people I probably need to have a conversation with, make some amends to restitution, whatever it is, step eight. And then nine, when there's an opportunity to actually make the amends, you do it. But here's the ticket. Now that you did all that, you got out of the hospital, you apologized to everybody, <laughs> right? You changed your behavior, you stopped being, you know, a chip on your shoulders. Your way of the highway, you got past all of that. Now, how, how do you go about making sure that when these character defects do kind of slip back up, that you're not causing this long-term injury again? Step 10. take a personal inventory on a daily basis and make prompt amends. So now we're not sitting on stuff years and years and years. Yeah, I talked to you wrong. I, I don't care if you say it's okay. It's not okay. It bothers me. I spoke to you wrong. That was inappropriate. I was disrespectful. And I, I'm doubling back here and I want to say to you, I apologize. I'm going to try to be more mindful because you didn't deserve that. Step 10, daily inventory. And you feel some empowerment because now I'm moving into the 11th step, that daily maintenance through prayer, right? And meditation. I'm maintaining conscious contact with my doctor, right? And the instructions that my doctor has given me to live a full productive life. I'm doing that on a daily basis. I'm checking the list zero to 10 of all the things that they discharged me from the hospital with. They said, they said, you need to do these things. What did your higher power tell you that you need to do? And are you in touch with your higher power on a regular basis so that you can see if you're veering to the left or the right, or are you keeping it straight forward? That's step 11, people, right? And so I do that. But now, now that I'm doing that regularly, I've been empowered to be able to go tell somebody else my story. To be helpful to someone else. I try to carry this message. I don't know how, there's no other, it's the most simple way to break down what we're talking about here, choices. I choose recovery. But choosing recovery is not just staying stopped. It's some work to do. And I choose to do that work today. I want for you to do the work. I want for you to think about this meditation. It's so short. I wish all of them could be like this, right? It's so short, but straight to the point. Right, words, I love words. I, I, in fact, I'm working on a book. You guys might be interested in it. I'm working on a book myself. It's 850 pages long right now. And it's not, it's three of the quarter. It's like I have a quarter of it to still do. 850 pages, that's a lot of words. We use words. I love words. But sometimes they just, they just confuse things, right? 
This short meditation is beautiful. And I hope today that you're going to choose recovery because I know, I know that you can, or otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. I know that you can do it. I believe in you. Have a beautiful day on purpose. I intend to, and I will be talking to you tomorrow. This was an amazing morning we've spent together. Talk to you soon.